Thanks, everyone. I'm presenting my work on expressive movement generation with machine learning. After a brief introduction of the topic of this thesis, we we'll start by presenting our review of the literature. Next, we present the data and the tools that we have developed to support our research. We then present our neural network-based movement controller. After that, we present our approach to music-driven dance generation. Finally, we review the contributions and outline some of the future work. So first, the introduction. Our focus on this thesis is on training machine learning models on motion capture data to develop movement generation systems. The research that we present is at the intersection of generative systems, machine learning, human movement, and affective computing. First, let's talk about why we're interested in working in generative movement models. Over the past two decades, we have been seeing a shift from linear to nonlinear media, and with that shift, there has been an increasing demand for more content, which includes the animation of humanoid characters. Uh, for this purpose, we can use the generative models as movement controllers directly embedded in video games to generate the movements, or we can use them as computer-assisted creativity tools which provide on-demand content for human animators so that they can further uh, refine the and create the animations. Also, having better generative models means that we can have models that better understand human movement computationally, which would allow us to design and develop better movement aware technologies. <coughs> Finally, we are interested in using generative models as tools for creating artwork. As we started our research on movement generation models, we realized that the research community lacked a comprehensive review of this the fast evolving field of machine learning based movement generation. Uh, so we started our research by writing such a review of the state of the art. We set the scope of uh, our review on studies that train machine learning models on motion capture data to generate novel samples. As a result, we leave out the non-generative data-driven works, such as blending motion clips or motion graphs. Uh, we also do not cover physics-based or hybrid methods. Uh, so, looking at the literature, in terms of the general, we summarize the general directions of the works uh, along three aspects. First and mo maybe most obvious one is that the generated movements need to be believable. Part of this believability is achieved by ensuring that the movements follow the laws of physics in whatever universe that uh, they exist. Uh, and another important aspect of important ingredient of believability is shown to be the expressivity of the characters. Next, uh, one of the other problems to make these movement generation uh, models usable for a variety of applications is to uh, support controlling the qualities of the generated movements, and with that comes the questions of what to control and how to control it, which we'll talk about shortly. Uh, finally, uh, as another uh, along the line, uh, along uh, control and manipulation, uh, some of the works are designed to tackle interactive animation, which besides creating an efficient, fast and efficient model, uh, they need to address problems such as generating uh, realistically looking transitions from one state to the other. So we looked at what is controlled. Uh, so when we look at uh, the literature and look for what is being controlled, uh, we categorize this, uh, the levels of control into whether the, the task, the functional aspect of the movement is being controlled, which represents the task at hand. And only a um, few of the re more recent works are starting to tackle the problem of controlling, uh, switching from one task to the other, from one function to the other. In terms of planning, uh, you see some uh, planning the hand trajectory or navigation on flat ground. Uh, there isn't much interaction, or there's one work that has interaction between one or two works that has interaction between um, more than one mover. And more recently, we are seeing interactions between the mover and their environment, whether it's being the train or props. Uh, in terms of the expression, uh, controlling the expressive qualities of movement, 
Uh, many works started by uh, controlling arbitrary styles of movements. Few were controlling based on categorical emotion labels and uh, which we are, are uh, controlling dimensional representation of affect. Uh, so, well, one of the gaps that we found in the literature, among uh, many other things, it was that most of the reviewed works either did not support a mechanism for, con for controlling their output, or if they provided such mechanism, they most of them lack controlling semantically meaningful, providing a semantically meaningful between the control parameters and ritual agents, and more notably, the expressive qualities of movement. As a result of this, uh, we developed our research questions around the lack of meaningful and expressive control and movement generation. So we devised four research questions. The first one uh, is, what is the state of the art on using machine learning models and machine capture data to create movement generation systems, which we already started talking about. Our second research question deals with whether what tools and data we need to support the research on using machine learning and motion capture data. Our third research question asks whether we can do a style imitation for movement generation, and if so, what characteristics of the generated movements we can control. Finally, our fourth research question asks whether we can teach a machine learning model to generate dance movements to streaming audio track. We structure our thesis and this presentation uh, along these four research questions. We present the state of the art uh, movement generation. Uh, we present two data sets that we have uh, captured uh, along with a uh, number of tools and libraries. We present affectnet and walknet models, which allow controlling the expression of affect, planning, and personal movement signature. And we present GrooveNet, which uh, provides uh, music driven dance generation in real time. So, we already talked about uh, state of the art here. We summarized some of the other findings uh, from the state of the art. Uh, we reviewed 48 works spanning from 2000 to 2020. Uh, and throughout these two decades, we can see the evolution of the approaches that they are used, as well as the shifting uh, sources of the data, uh, the goals and the ability of the movements, uh, and as well as the evaluation techniques. In terms of data, uh, we know that good training data is one of the key elements in machine learning based approaches. For the most part, data has been one of the bottlenecks in what can be done in the field. Uh, Early works, the most common data set that they were using was the data from Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, many captured their own data, and more recently we are seeing uh, starting to see data coming from the industry, such as Adobe and Ubisoft. In terms of what machine learning techniques are used, uh, we see a wide variety of approaches from uh, dimensionality reduction techniques such as PCA to Gaussian processes, hidden Markov models that come from speech synthesis research, and uh, artificial neural variety of artificial neural networks. With the most recent uh, approach, uh, thing in the paper was uh, phased function networks. In terms of evaluation, the amount of attention paid to evaluation of the approach varies uh, highly by the work. Often, it's an informal inspection of the work of the results, sometimes human participants are asked to review uh, the outputs, and depending on the problem, sometimes some analytical metrics are defined. Uh, however, uh, one of the gaps that we identified in the literature is that there are no common benchmarks or metrics in the community, such as those that exist in, for example, computer vision, which allow a uh, variety of uh, researchers and groups to tackle the same problem and improve on it. So the next part we are doing now we are going to talk about the data and the tools for movement generation research. When we started our research, uh, there was a shortage of the, the type of the data that we needed for our particular research questions, and well as uh, the tools that would allow us to easily implement and experiment with, uh, experiment with our ideas. Here we present uh, the set of the data and the tools that we have created, and as a note, some of these uh, projects are led by me, and some of them are collaborations with others. 
Moda 2.0 is the second iteration of a web-based front end to download uh, the data that we have to browse and download the data they have captured. It's available at the URL shown there. And uh, right now, besides the data that we have captured for the research we present today, it currently hosts data from our colleagues, uh, some of the other data from our colleagues. And we intend to uh, expand the data that we host on Ethereum as well. The first data set that we present is the Affect Expressive Movements database. The main purpose of this uh, database is, data set is to collect movements with expressive variations along a two-dimensional space of balance and arousal. We have uh, walking movements along a uh, figure eight shape path with four eight subjects, and we have seven other functions, data from seven other functions, such as sitting uh, uh, from two objects from two subjects. Our second data set is GrooveDB. Uh, it contains uh, synchronized music and motion capture pairs from uh, 10 dancers. Next, we present MOVA, which has an interactive movement analytics framework. The key idea is to be able to load multimodal movement data, connect to a library of features, and uh, uh, be able to visualize everything in parallel. Uh, so the applications would be either we want to explore a um, segment of movement data, or we want to develop uh, feature extraction techniques, and we want to evaluate and analyze those feature, ex feature extraction algorithms. Then we present PyMo, which is a Python library for machine learning research on machine capture data. Uh, the idea here is to create a library that would allow us to easily uh, parse mocap data from different formats uh, and be able to perform a number of uh, command pre and post processing algorithms and also be able to visualize the data in 2D and 3D, uh, all integrated into uh, the tools that are common for machine learning research such as Jupyter Notebooks. We also contributed to the M plus M project, uh, which is an open source software framework that uh, allows non-technical users to build real-time interactive systems that use movement data. We contributed to M plus M by integrating the data from the first iteration of Moda as well as Movo. Finally, uh, in collaboration with William Lee, we worked on a model for estimating the perceived affect levels from full body motion captured data. For this project, uh, instead of using the more common rating approach uh, for rate, uh, annotating the data, the, the balance and result levels, we use, uh, we rank pairs of inputs and uh, we use, we train a model based on RankNet, which is especially designed for uh, pairwise ranking. And our results show that the model has a better performance for ranking the aerosol levels than balance. Also, the performance of the model highly depends on uh, the movement type. And also, we recognize one of the main limitations of RankNet was that it wasn't a temporal model. Next, we are going to talk about our neural network-based movement controller for virtual agents. With our third research question, we ask whether we can do a side imitation for movement generation. We further break down this question into three sub-questions, whether we can control the perceived affective qualities, whether we can control the personal variations, the movement, and whether we can control the planning aspects of movement. To address RQ3, we train a machine learning model on a data set that, of movements that contain such variation, variations along the affective quality the walking duration uh, as a presentation of planning and personal movements we can share. We will start by capturing the training data. In our first iteration, we train the model uh, to control the perceived affective qualities. And in the second iteration, we complete that model by integrating, controlling the personal movement signature as well as the planning. And since this is an iterative work, we are going to talk about the data and what it. To train the model, we annotate the training data based on the valence and arousal levels along a two-dimensional continuous space. Uh, for planning, we annotated the, the heading direction of the character. And as a representation of 
uh, we use the uh, we annotate the data based on the identity of a mover as a representation of the personal movement signature. For the machine learning model, we use factored conditional restricted Boltzmann machine or FCRVM. The model works by taking a window of previous frames and a set of control parameters, and it predicts the next movement frame. We specifically chose this model because of its special ability ability to modulate the behavior of modulate the weights of the network as and therefore the behavior of the network by whatever we pass into information that we pass to this context unit, which makes it very suitable for uh, control problems. Here we see the movement generation for, um, for Wagnet uh, in real time, playing with the direction and we can turn the character. For changing the performer, if you pay attention to the movements of the hips, you see the shift from one style of the performer to the other style. We then change the levels of arousal and valence. Here we have neutral valence and low arousal. Sorry, now the character has very low valence and raw, low arousal, and we increase the valence gradually. We also ran a study to validate uh, whether humans can perceive the expressivity of the generated movements the, the same way that they do with the recorded movements. So we asked human participants to rate the valence and arousal levels, these perceiving both the generated and recorded movements using this two-dimensional uh, grid that we explained to them beforehand. Uh, so we find that uh, the arousal levels were perceived the same between the recorded and the generated movements. However, the valence levels of the generated movements were marginally perceived less than the recorded data. And overall, the mean rating of the valence of the generated movements is lower, slightly lower than the recorded movements. And this has been consistent with some other literature that we have seen that uh, recognizing valence without uh, other cues such as facial expression is not easy. Next, uh, we are gonna talk about our music driven dance generation. Once we addressed our third research question, uh, we wanted to go one step further and tack tackle a more complex problem. With our fourth research question, then we look at generating dance movements for a given stream of audio track. We chose dancing to music because dancing is a creative activity that best illustrates the complexity and expressiveness of human movement. Also, as a machine learning problem, it it's a complex problem and requ requ which requires learning a complex mapping between two modalities where there is no single correct answer to optimize for. Also, we wanted the model to be uh, do the generation in real time. So besides uh, keeping the model slim, uh, the model cannot look at the whole music sequence uh, for generating movements. So we needed a data set of synchronized dance and music. So one option that we had was to use, uh, for example, PoseNet to extract 2D two-dimensional poses from dance videos, which there are a lot of YouTube videos we could use. But the problem, uh, although that would give us a large amount of data, uh, we did some experiments and the quality of those data are often too noisy. Uh, so we decided to capture motion capture it ourselves. So we did two sets of captures. Uh, first we did, well, the first set we did in 2016, which we had one performer dancing to three songs and we got around 23 minutes of recording. And uh, in 2020, we managed to capture data from nine more performers dancing to excerpts from nine songs, around, which gave us around three hours of data. Uh, we worked on uh, RQ4 in two iterations. In the first iteration, uh, we used a CRBM model on the 2016 data and analytical audio features. Uh, in the second iteration, we use a recurrent neural network uh, we experiment with the new data that we captured, and also we 
uh, as a representation of audio, we look at using uh, embeddings. So in the first iteration, we extracted a set of analytical audio features uh, that we selected from the music information retrieval literature, and we used the essential library to extract them. For the machine learning model, uh, in the first iteration, we used the same FCRBM as we used in Wacknet, and here uh, the audio features are given to the context unit, so the audio features would change the behavior of the network at each frame. So our experiments show that uh, in the first iteration of GrooveNet uh, that we trained with the FCRPM, the model can generate grooving movements only when given the same signs that were in the training data set. But the model fails to generate possible movements for signs that were outside of the training set. And here we see an example of the model uh, generating movements for a sign that was part of the training data set. And this is an example, uh, another example of uh, one of the training, uh, one of the signs from training data set. And as we see here, the model cannot generate proper movements for a sign that was not part of the training. So we improved, uh, in the second iteration, we tried to improve GrooveNet. We replaced the FCRBM with a recurrent neural network with GRU cells. We also refined the analytical audio features and we experiment started, we experimented with using an embedding representation of the audio signal. Um, meanwhile, we captured new data in 2020. So here is our recurrent model. At the bottom, uh, we have the input layer, which for each frame, we concatenate the audio and movement features. We pass it to the recurrent network, uh, which is followed by two fully connected layers to predict the next frame. And because it's a recurrent network, the hidden state of the GRU is passed from one frame to the other. So we refine our analytical audio features by adding a square wave uh, that represents the standard position of the bits and we also encode the spectral energy of each bit segment. Uh, we also selected a subset of features that we used in the first iteration. Uh, besides the analytical audio features, we experimented with embeddings and we get a 16-dimensional embedding representation of radio signal using a pre-trained in-sync model. And on the right, you see the representation of the radio signal on the top the analytical audio features in the middle and the embedding representation on the bottom. So our first set of experiments show that the generated movements can follow the beats. And uh, uh, also when we train the model on data from a single performer, uh, GrooveNet 2.0 can generate possible movements for songs that were both from the within and outside of its training set. So if it's better generalization than first iteration. However, when we train the model on data from multiple subjects, uh, the model is pushed towards landing an average pose and basically, which is what uh, it keeps predicting for each frame. Also, uh, we found that training on analytical audio features outperforms training on embeddings. So here we, wanted to evaluate whether the model can, the generated movements can follow the beats. And the first row, uh, so and for each plot, uh, so we have the audio representation as blue lines, and then the red lines are the vertical position of the heaps as a representation of the rhythm in the movement. Uh, the gray vertical lines are the position of the beats. Uh, on the top row, we have the recorded movements as our ground truth. And on the bottom, we have the generated movements for the same signs. And we see that the model is able to follow the rhythm, fo follow the beats uh, in that sense. 
we repeat the same experiment with uh, signs that were outside of the training data set and we see that still the model is able to uh, follow the bits. Here we see an example of the model generating movements uh, for signs, generating that movement for signs that was part of the training data set. an example of the model generating movements for something that was not a part of the training data set. We also experimented with generating dance movements to signs from a different genre. We are also working on a real-time generation engine where we can uh, write the audio from a uh, computer and basically send that to the model and then for whatever sign you play the model starts generating movements. Okay, so our contribution and conclusion part. Uh, so to recap, we presented a state of the art on uh, using machine learning models and machine capture data to create generative movement models. We presented two publicly available data sets as well as a number of tools and libraries. We presented AffectNet and WhiteNet, which are movement generation uh, controllers for virtual agents. And also we presented GrooveNet, which is a music driven dance generation model. In terms of the future work uh, and under the category of data and the tools, uh, we recognize that uh, the field of movement computing needs more comprehensive libraries for processing movement data. Similar to those li libraries such as those li the libraries that exist for computer vision, natural language processing, and music. Uh, in terms of our movement generation and control models, uh, now that we have data from more performers, uh, we are interested in uh, extending the work and use the whole the data from eight subjects data set to learn the Latin representation of personal movement signature for working instead of using the identity of the movers. We are also interested in integrating the affect exclusive movement control with physics based approaches to control movement so that we can achieve the best of both fields. Uh, in our, for our music driven dance generation work, uh, we want to improve the performance of the model when we train it on data from multiple subjects. And as part of that, we're, we want to explore different machine learning techniques. Uh, we also want to uh, pursue our ideas on creating an art installation with GrooveNet. Finally, I, I would like to acknowledge and thank my supervisors and committee members, uh, my collaborators, uh, the researchers and collaborators from the Moving the Stories uh, uh, group, uh, my lab mates and friends. Uh, also, I'd like to thank uh, people from the Motion Capture Studio at Emily Carr for helping us capturing the data and also our funding parties in circulation. Thank you.